Football Show, North Jersey Sports.com's original multimedia series talking all things football across North Jersey. This is season six, episode five, and we got a good one for you tonight. I am Corey Doviak, being joined by just my solo compadre here as we narrow the panel to just the venerable one. He is Jimmy Avatabale. What's going on, Jimmy? Hey, what's up, Core? Another another good football week last week, and uh, you know a couple of big games. Uh, the NJIC, we got some teams that could clinch division crowns and and try to get into those semis. So we're starting to get into the nitty gritty here. Yeah, it was. I actually wore a sweatshirt to a game on Friday night, so it felt like uh, the fall is upon us. And this football season, you know, we correspond over the summer. We talk about stuff, and then the thing starts, and all of a sudden. Zip, <laughs> it flies right by it. So uh, we're trying to ke- uh, keep up with the race that is the high school football season across North Jersey, and nobody better to do it with than our guest this evening. We are going to have DJ Nymphius, the head coach of the Riverdale Golden Hawks, the two-time defending state sectional champions, off to a 4-0 start again, again this year, heading into a showdown in Franklin Lakes on Friday night against Ramapo. So... I am very interested to get to that interview, but just before we do, and we'll we'll keep it quick here before we get to DJ. But just thoughts, uh, overall thoughts from last weekend. Start with the game you were at on Saturday, Bergen Bosco. I mean, you know the brouhaha that surrounds that one every year. We had Vito Campanella on last week uh, talking about it. He goes out and gets a fourteen thirteen win uh, in front of a packed house in Oregon. Yeah, you know, huge crowd, pomp and circumstance. Both both teams there, their their fan sections, the students going crazy. You know, Bergen walked out with a fourteen thirteen win. You know, not the greatest technically played game there was. I guess sometimes when you know emotions are involved, it gets a little sloppy. Uh, Bergen found the way, uh, held on, intercepted a pass with under a minute left at midfield to win it. Unfortunately for Bergen, another one there, you know, big stars, Aeneas DeCosmo fractured his ankle very early in the game. So he's out now, possibly the whole season, might be back for the playoffs. So, you know, Bergen Catholic all of a sudden seems a little vulnerable with losing, obviously, Josh McKenzie and Aeneas DeCosmo. Uh, for, for Don Bosco, very good effort. They just seem to not be able to get over the hump there. Uh, you know, but I do think they played closer to their le- their top level that they could play. Bergen, I think, uh, you know, coming off the St. Peter's game, I thought they'd be a little bit more uh, emotionally charged. Uh, you know, they, they were down 10-7 and had a fight and come back and win the game. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, it goes both ways, too. They had such an emotional start to the season, you know, with the two out-of-state wins. And right. Then- prep down in Jersey City, and then Bosco, I mean, there's only so many times you can, well, I guess not, but, you know, it, 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 it's a mental challenge as much as it is a physical challenge of, of getting up week after week. Uh, they don't have right. a bye this week. They play straight through, but if there is such a thing, they got a public school on the schedule this week in Irvington. So, you know, Irvington lost to Ridgewood during the regular season, so maybe... Bergen can get a, an early lead, get some of their guys out of there, and, and, and you know have a half, at least an extra half to heal up going into the big one against St. Joe's Montvale uh, the week after that. So interesting there. And then, you know, for Bosco, 2-2 uh, two and two on the season, you know, with two out-of-state games plus Bergen Catholic, for them to be 2-2 two and two at this point, you know, at that program, certainly not good enough, but uh, not a disaster, and they haven't eliminated themselves from anything yet, uh, and nobody will until they're knocked out of the playoffs because they're all going to make it, and they're all on the same level, and it's just going to come down to uh, one game at a time. We will right. talk more about last week. We will preview what is coming up for this week, where we're going to be. The break, the great Brian Carr will be back from his European vacation, probably with plenty of photos and tweets to accompany it this week, so he will be back in action. But before we get to all of that stuff, let us welcome in our guest this evening, at a pivotal point of the show, 
when we move on to our guest this evening, joining us on the Felician University hotline. And I will just say this. Our sponsor, Felician University, if they had a football team, I would recommend that our guest this evening to be their head coach. So uh, I'm just saying, not saying Felician will ever get a football team, but if they do, DJ Nymphius would be a great job for the head coaching job there. Uh, in Rutherford, Coach, thank you for joining us here on the football show. How you doing? Do you have any interest in a non-existent Felician University head coaching football job? Um, no, I don't even want to be the head coach where I am. <laughs> <laughs> Zinger number one, and we just started. Now, DJ Nymphy is joining us here, and this is... I'm, I'm, it's such a. I was just putting together some notes before you came on, and I'm like, wow, what a great, a great job of producing this show by me, because you have so many good things going on around the program. First of all, two-time defending North One Group Three State Sectional Champions, four and zero this year. Overall, nine-game winning streak, outscoring your opponents 121 to 21 through four games this year. Coming off a big win over something called the Newburgh Free Academy, going out of state for the second straight year and coming home with a win. Good times at uh, Riverdale. Why don't you give us the state of the state before we get into some more specifics? Well, it's been kind of an interesting year. You know, we thought we had some kids come back who were pretty good players. Uh, obviously, we had to fit some pieces in the guys that that uh, that uh, you know graduated. Uh, you know, finding the guy to play quarterback was really big. So that competition was really a – that was a full nine months of uh, competition for the quarterback job. And, and uh, I think Jack Gillies won the job fair and square. He beat everybody out. And, uh, you know, he's pretty much become the guy. And, and, and listen, that's the you know toughest shoes. Dave Estevez, your quarterback last year, your quarterback you know for the last three years, actually uh, one of the best to play ever at Riverdale. One of the best all around athletes in the history of Bergen County. You know, I, I, I'm not afraid to say that. And uh, you know, how about starting? Did you feel like you were starting over because you had not only forget on the field relationship that you had with Dave Estevez, the personal relationship that you guys had too. Uh, was it was a weird coming into camp this year, not seeing as Jimmy likes to call him the Magic Man, uh, you know, behind center. <laughs> no, I, you know, it, it, it's uh, we have enough time between the season. You know, I mean, get, get used to each other. And <laughs> our quarterback room, we think, is really good. It has been. You know, David had been part of that. We've had had guys previously who've been really great in the room, and uh, we had five guys in the room to start this year, and, and they they really work hard starting in January at, at their craft. Getting together to throw and spend time breaking down film and just getting discussion about things. So um, it was a little different not having David out in the field. Um, some of your automatic answers don't exist, right? But you know, we had to. We kind of had to let the offense come to us and the team come to us. We had some veteran leadership on the, uh, you know, at some of our skill play positions with Jack Racine and David Fletcher and Mike Sirico, so We thought that helped. And uh, you know, obviously defensively, we, we were pretty. Feeling pretty good because we had all, all you know all linebackers back, so um, we thought that was a good thing for us. So it, it went pretty well. It went pretty well. I think it was a pretty smooth transition. Yeah, well, you're you're uh, averaging five points allowed per game, so I would say the defense yeah. is uh, doing pretty well for you. Go ahead, Jimmy. Yeah, coach. Obviously, you know, so far so good for an O, and uh, and a game that really flew under the radar in Bergen County. You know, you dropped a, a, a weaker opponent like you've done the last couple of years. You go up and play a, a very good program, Newburgh Free Academy in New York State. You come home with a twenty-four nothing uh, victory. If you can talk a little bit about deciding to drop maybe a weaker team and going to play a. Uh, a really good program in Newburgh Free Academy and how that will prepare you for your upcoming game this week against Ramapo. Well, I, I think the first thing is that you know, Newburgh Free Academy is a public school. It's got 3,200 kids. Yeah. Outside of the New York City schools, it's the third biggest public school in all of New York State. Crazy. Behind Brentwood on Long Island and New Rochelle, Westchester County. So a big school. They've had a lot of success playing football for about 125 years. <laughs> um, they, you know, they... Uh, a man up in section nine who happens to be Mike Sirico's I think distant uncle Greg Sirico he's the head of section nine and he's over at Warwick he kind of brought the game together and uh, I, I wouldn't say we dropped a weaker opponent I think guys right now some guys just want a chance to kind of get their feet on the ground so 
somebody asked us if we'd be willing to do that. We asked if, if they'd be willing to let us go play another game, and we were able to find that opponent in the game right away, and we got these guys. So uh, we were, you know, they were good. They were good. They were a tremendous defensive football team. They were fast. They were well coached. Uh, I, I was very impressed with them. We're fortunate to come out with the W. But it was a good football program, and, and I, I came away very impressed. How do you feel about, you know, last year you went out to Shippensburg. Two years ago, remind us, Jimmy and I were talking about it before we came on the air. You went down to South Jersey in a crazy game, and you won it at the buzzer. Who was that again? Bridgeton. Bridgeton, right. Bridgeton. Uh, couldn't remember that. So, but you know, now three years into this, of you know, going uh, off, you know, off the trail to pick up a, an opponent. I mean, is is that good? You know, I, because I know you, and having talked to you on the air, off the air, everything else, I, I know you have the idea of what's good for high school football, high school sports, high school kids in mind. You know, is that a model? You know, now, go ahead. Go ahead. These have been equitable games, so I don't have a problem with that. I think if you look around, including the opponent we have this week, I mean, Coach Gibbs more than steps up and plays against really good teams. I mean, he opened up with Sparta this year. I mean, again, that's a testament to Sparta and Rampo having a decision to, to play that game and having the gumption to play that game. Yep. Uh, if you look at Rampo's schedule, they, they avoid nobody. Uh, so, you know, I think Old Japan falls in that category. PV, uh, I'm going to miss somebody. Wayne Hills, Wayne Valley. Yeah, uh, I, I really I'm not looking to upset anybody, uh, but I think teams do that, and and you got to do what's best for your program. If you have an opportunity to do that, we're never going to be an overnight travel team. The kids tell me they won't take me across the street, so I'm not taking them overnight. Anymore. <laughs> so, I, yeah, I, I think I, I think it's fair. You know, that, those are the easy travel. Yeah, you know, ship ship is a little bit longer, but we could do it. Um, and it. We like the one game travel. We think it it's fine. It's not yeah. too much. It's doable, and it's a nice uh, excursion for the kids. I mean, they get to see you know a different campus, a different uh, setup, a different whatever. When you go to Pennsylvania or New York, well, or, I, I I think getting a chance to play a, a team like Newburgh and have an appreciation for you know a situation where that can be pretty tough for those kids up there, but they're just there playing football. They coach their kids up. It's a big thing for their kids. I think they'll make a run in New York State for that upstate championship. And, uh, you know, I, th- I think it was good for both teams. Man. I don't have any problem doing it. Uh, I think it's the right thing to do, and it's a challenge. It also keeps your attention on what you have in front of you, which yep. is the moment. What What was the atmosphere like, uh, crowd-wise, you know, similar was, to here? Or? It was pretty cool. It was pretty cool. It's a very traditional high school. Um, they had about a 10-minute presentation before the game uh, honoring veterans. Uh, cool. Because quite a few veterans, I guess, have gone through Newburgh, and, and uh, what, it was impressive for the game. Uh, stands are built into the side of the school. It's a very old school environment. I guess the great, the the best parallel. It's got a similar feel to Hasbro Heights. Okay, so it's kind of like a pit. So it's probably, uh, yeah, it's a nice facility. Uh, again, I, I I have nothing but good things to say about them. And, uh, and and how their coaches do their do their job over there. But good and, I w- and we won I w- the game, so it gets better. <laughs> right, that always makes it sweeter. Now I'm just thinking about it because I went to two games on Friday. Neither one of them were very competitive, and I did heard that, hear that Newburgh, New York, is a burgeoning uh, craft brewery city. So I probably should have gone up and covered Riverdale and had somebody. I should have jumped on the bus and come home with you. <laughs> oh, sure, why not? Everyone else does. <laughs> All right, all right. Go ahead, Jimmy. Get us back on track. Yeah, obviously, coach. Yeah, obviously, coach. You, you you got Ramapo this weekend. It's it's become one of the premier public school rivalries. I didn't realize till I was looking at it today. This will be the ninth time you have played Ram, uh, Ramapo in the last five years, and you know there is the possibility down the line in the states, possibly a tenth. You know, there's a familiarity between the two programs, a respect for both programs. Uh, when you play them now this many times in, in the last four years, do you, do you almost tweak a couple of things to give them something different to look at, or do you just say, hey, this is what we are, you know, stop, stop it, you know, stop doing, you know, stop what we do? I think here's the difference. I think Brown Post, particularly on offense, knows who they are. We're still trying to figure that out. Mm-hmm. Um, defensively, I think both programs know who they are. Uh, so tweaking... 
I, I think every day is a, you know, part of your learning curve, and we try to make sure the kids have their feet pretty ground so they can play the game. And that's what we're going to try to do and uh, go out and play. It's the ninth time we've played in 44 games. Uh, so we, we get to see each other all the time. Uh, but it always seems like you're pretty distant from, from, from them. I'm, I, I'm sure they worry about what they do, and we get concerned with what we do. And we'll go see how we right. match up for the first time you know, this year. Yeah, they're, I mean, they're tremendous. Last, last year they got you 23-20 during the regular season and you returned a favor in the state uh, final. So, you know, you split last year. And they're actually the last team to beat you. You guys are on a nine-game winning streak. And it is, as Jimmy said, one of the best public school rivalries around. Uh, and it's going to be fun to see what happens this week too. How You know, and, and before that you had Demarest. And Demarest and you played that classic, the, the number one game on NorthJerseySports.com's tw- top 25 games of the year last year in a North 1 Group 3 semifinal. So I, I think one of the things that I'm always most impressed about your program is the way your kids are able to focus game in and game out. I mean, you know, Demarest had you marked after that. I mean, I know it's not the same team coming back, but the kids who played in that game certainly remembered it. Uh, and then you, you know, you have this excursion up to New York, and now you're back uh, up up against Rampo. But it seems like you are not. Not it seems like you are always able to get your kids to focus on the game at hand. Uh, any tricks you want to share? Um, I don't know if we are very. I don't know if we're always good at that. I, I will say this: I think you look around a program and how they handle things with their consistency. One of those teams we're playing this week. I think you'll see similar traits on it. The difference is I don't think we're physically talented enough to do anything but pay attention. We're just not talented enough. We're not imposing enough. So we have to do everything right all the time for us to have a chance to be competitive. That's kind of how we deal with every day of the week, all the time. Jimmy, well, listen, I'll let DJ's words stand on their own. I, I, very humble. The, the, the program is in sparkling condition and wins a lot of games, too. I just want to, you know, after that answer, remind people of that. But go ahead, Jimmy. Yeah, Coach, obviously the one thing you have to watch out for Ramapo is their outstanding quarterback, A.J. Wingfield. They run a lot of the run-pass option, and he's, he's really a wizard with the football, gets rid of it quick. Talk about the challenge that prevents your defense, especially your, you know, your secondary as far as being able to run, the, uh, read the run versus the pass. He's the best kid we'll face all year. Uh, he's an excellent football player. Uh, he's obviously attentive to his detail of what he's doing. We got to make sure we have our eyes in the right spot. Um, but you know, when we were a triple option team, you can get hypnotized by things. Uh, so we got to have our eye discipline all night long. And uh, he, he's, he, he's still going to make plays. He's that good. Yeah, Jimmy and I both saw the ramp hole at the pan game on Friday night. And, you know, I've seen A.J. play a couple games, and this was as good as he's I've ever seen him play. I mean, just the decision-making was good. Uh, not only picking out the right receiver, but putting the ball in the right spots, too, so guys could catch it and do some things with it after, too. And I thought he looked confident. I thought he looked fast. And, uh, yeah, he's going to be a uh, tough matchup for you, definitely, coming up this weekend. Jimmy, do you have anything else ab- about this game? Because then I want to get into a, a side conversation with the coach, as we often do. Uh, when he joins us here, uh, you know, just obviously with Ramapo, we uh, we mentioned Wingfield, but their receivers are excellent. Their running back is excellent, and obviously AJ also running the ball. Uh, you know, what kind of a, a challenge is that? Do you go in there saying, "Hey, we're going to take this away," and and hope they beat us doing something else? Uh, you know, game plan wise, you know, what do you feel that you have to stop to be successful? Well, I, I think I think we got to win first down, stop big plays, mm-hmm. and, and then we, you know, the special teams battle is gigantic. Uh, there, there's never a time when Rampo is not tremendous, outstanding, so well coached the special teams. And, yep. and the other right. thing is, you know, people never talk about Rampo on defense, and that's just absurd. They're very, mm-hmm. very good at defense. And I know that I've watched your defense coordinator over the years, and. You watch your kids line up. They, they they're very knowledgeable and they can play. And they just they don't try to outsmart themselves. Uh, they're incredibly sound and they got guys. Yeah. So mm-hmm. uh, we're we're gonna try to stay in the game the best we can. To be honest, they're 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 uh, they're notch above everybody else right now. How about all right? So now the side conversation, the playoff structure. Jimmy and I were. Uh, 
discussing it last week, and you know, it, it so it rolls off the tongue. You know, you're the two time defending North One Group Three State Sectional Champion. We've been doing that for years. I don't even know what bra- you know North Group Three. Uh, I'm not sure how they're going to break it down. I'm not sure what a United Power Ranking is or the Born Power Index or all these other crazy things. What are your thoughts on the new format for state playoffs? You like it? Don't like it? Waiting to see how it plays out before you make a decision? What do you think? Well, zero impact on us. I mean, we got to worry about the wall in front of us and climbing. Um, I, I, I tell people all the time, the best teams don't win. Uh, it's, it's a shell game. Uh, do I think it may be overdone? Probably. Uh, you're, you got you got a system that does have a problem with the spread, the foreign power system. So I don't think that's good. Um, I don't know who's being rewarded for for uh, playing the right teams. You know, you got the non-public thing where you play a non-public and go out there and you you get harpooned and you get points for just showing up. I'm not a big fan of that. I will never schedule that way. I don't think that's the objective. We're not looking to skirt the system to do something, but. Right, you could show up and you, you could just show up and throw your JV I mean, team however, out there. However, go ahead, I'm sorry. No, I was just going to say, like, well, you could do that. Throw your JV team out there. You, you know, get a running clock in the second quarter and, and be home in an hour and a half. Well, we're not looking to do that. And I don't right. think most coaches are going to do that. They're going to go out and play the most competitive schedule um, that they can and and get their kids better. And uh, then the chips will fall where the chips will fall. I think I think anybody's getting really obsessed with it. I just think I hope I hope they got it down. It's not real transparent. That'll say, right? It's not real transparent. So I hope teams are able to know who they're playing early enough so that they can get ready to play the game to the coach's comfort because we're professionals. You know, coaches yeah. are professionals, and 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 we want to be able to prepare our kids the best. We're educators. We want to do the best we can. And uh, I don't know how early guys will know that. I, there's a lot of components in this thing that uh, I don't understand. And I'm not going to worry about them because I don't understand them, and it's not going to impact how we we prepare. So uh, I don't know. What's your thought? I'm interviewing you. <laughs> you better ask Jimmy. He pays attention to these things more than I do. I mean, I kind of, you know, yeah. I, I show up, I see what the bracket is, and pick a game and, and go show up. I, if I, you know, <laughs> I would drive myself crazy about it because, he, again, you and I have talked off, you know, and I, I think, all right, I'll answer it. I think it's way overcomplicated. Uh, I I think that the the patch was missed. The fix was missed years ago with the non-publics. Uh, I, I would like to see the old leagues back. I would, you know, it, I think a football conference with 100 teams in it is too unruly. I don't think you start with a base of you know here's our games that we're going to play year in and year out. And then we can add or subtract based on, you know, strength of program and all those other things. And I, I feel like we're moving away from the tradition of, of high school football in term, you know, in favor of uh, parity where, but not parity across the board. It's where teams that are weaker are only playing teams that are weaker against middle teams and then the better teams against each other and then up to the, the non-publics. I mean, I understand it, and I, I but I, I, I can't say that I necessarily like it, just I guess because I'm getting old and, you know, set in my ways a little bit, but I, I, I miss the NBIL, I miss the BCSL American, I miss the BCSL National, and I miss the well, BCSL Olympic. I, I don't know, I don't know if that would help either, Corey, I gotta be honest, I think, I think the biggest thing is the playoffs are driving the sport now, and that's not helping the sport. Right, right, that's my point. And the, well, the other thing is, like, fish the fi- uh, go ahead. The fish that have to be fried, we're, we're, we got the wrong fish. I mean, we're we're not looking at lack of participation. We're doing nothing to increase the participation. Uh, I yeah. forget the competitive balance. What about kids that aren't playing football? That's what we need to address. Right. And it's too top heavy in terms of those teams that have been successful. And we're you know we're going to forget what's floating the boat, and it's going to hurt us in the long run for the sport. Oh, well, let me take it a step further and asking you, uh, I mean, I'm not blowing smoke. You are one of the best high school football coaches in the state of New Jersey. What What about starting, and Jimmy and I talk about this all the time, you start June 11th, and, you know, there, it's a tremendous commitment for, you know, I know what the payoff is. It's to be a part of a team. It's to play a high school sport. It's to do, you know, and, and that's, you know, 
<laughs> kind of what I dedicated my life to. So I'm, I'm not saying that it's it's a worthless endeavor. In fact, it's a very worthy endeavor. But, you know, guys of my generation are always saying, you know, these kids are soft. Well, back in my day, well, back in our day, we showed up two weeks before school started. You had a week of double sessions. You had a week of practice, and then you played. And then you had your grand finale on, on Thanksgiving, and it, it was a three-, four-month commitment. And, you know, the, the borderline kid is going to look at it and say, you know, June 11th, I, I might want to go on vacation at some point. What, 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 what do I think of, of going back to the old way? Yeah. There ain't no money in that. <laughs> no, it's a money mule, man. It's, it's a money mule. This is all about making money. Yeah. I mean, they can tell me everything they want about how this is going to help. This is about making money for the state. Period. Yeah. That's it. It's about making money. And they have less guys want to coach, less kids are playing. It's not like a broken record. But this is about making money. All right? Jimmy, you want to and chime it's, in? No, it's, and anything, anything else is a fraud. It's about making money. Go ahead, Jimmy. Yeah, you know, Coach, I agree with you 100%. I mean, then you throw on this 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 farce of instant replay. Oh. I mean, is that, is that you know, is that the biggest, you know? No, I, I got something for you. I know you want to listen to this. So we're up in New York State, and we look out there, and our quarterback said, I said to him, I said, hey, Jack. I said, take a look at that. He says, hey, Coach, we got 25 second clock today. They had him posted mm -hmm. up there. All right? Wow. So I said, you know, we need the college rule. I said, we need the college rule. All right? And, and they said, well, he said, what do you mean? I said, we need play ends, 40 second clock, posted in the corners, because then we don't have to worry about ball being ready for play. As soon as the play ends, 40 second clock. I wanted that over instant replay. Let's use that technology. So then we know when the ball's really got to be snapped. 40 second clock, whatever you want to make it, 35 second clock. I don't really give a rat's behind just do that, right. and, and and that's fine. The instant replay thing, you know, we don't even have huddle sideline in our place. We we don't have that. You know, I mean, I'm too busy trying to coach a darn kid to look at a picture. Uh, DJ, right. well, what's I mean, what's the worst thing know, that happens we, if a referee gets a call wrong? <laughs> what you lose no. yardage, you lose a high school football game. It's just like what. what where's the end game? You, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. okay, let's add this. Okay, let's add that, and then. Back to your point, we got less kids playing. We got less, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, uh, right, let's oh, fix yeah, well, what's... That's the thing. It, that, well, here, here's the thing. Jim, Jim, probably agree with this too. Well, let's follow the money. Follow the money. Yeah, that's all I'm going to say. Somebody's running some system where they've offered that service to a group, right? <laughs> and they're getting something back on it. And I'll leave it at that. But uh, we could talk off the air what that is at some point. Yeah, well, follow I would the money. Love to. Well, Jimmy, this was not on the production rundown for this show tonight, but that's why we have DJ Dimpheus on, because he's honest, he's forthright, and uh, we are big fans. And it sounds like I am going to be making a uh, trip to Ramapo. You're at Ramapo, correct? I'm not going to show up at the wrong field. We're at, we're at, we're at Ramapo, and it's, right, it's, a, it's, a high school, it's a high school rivalry where they've dominated us. In the, we've never beaten them in the regular season. Really? I mean, we've never seen them. So, yeah, I mean, I mean, rivalry. <laughs> Ain't a rivalry. <laughs> rivalry, you get your butt kicked every time you go over to a place. So, you know, I mean, they're, 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 they're uh, as I said, they're a notch above, and we'll see if we can hang in the game. <laughs> DJ Nymphius, the colorful head coach of the Riverdale Fighting Golden Hawks. Thank you. Again, your obligation to the football show on NorthJerseySports.com might be complete for this season, but we may need you again at some point down the road. Okay, I appreciate it. Thank you. All right, Jimmy. Interesting stuff there, as always, with Riverdale head coach DJ Nymphius. You know, he certainly knows what he's talking about. His record speaks for itself. Uh, Riverdale is year in, year out, one of the best teams in North Jersey and in the state at its uh, enrollment level. But also the other things that he speaks candidly. Uh, he speaks with the best interest of his players at heart, and I truly believe that that is what drives him. And, uh, I mean, he's just, he, he's kind of a breath, of, a breath of fresh air in high school sports. Yeah, you, you know, you mentioned one thing you're going to get with Coach Niff is besides being a great coach and having a great program, is he's going to be honest. And, and, and if it means uh, putting the game of football ahead of his program, he's very willing to do that. Every time we talk to him, he'll be honest as far as 
you know, if he agrees with something or disagrees, and, and you don't see that a lot from coaches. So that, you know, that's the one fun thing that I like having when coach, uh, coach is on. You're always going to get that honesty. Yeah, I mean, we get that from coaches a lot, just not always on the air. <laughs> That's right. He, he carries the, uh, you know, hey, Corey, nice to see you conversation right over onto the microphone, which I greatly appreciate. And I don't feel like I, I, I it's never like I'm trying to say, oh, gotcha there. I mean, you know, I just try to put it on a tee for him. And because most of all, I'm interested to hear his answers as much as, you know, uh, trying to make good content for the site here. So DJ Nymphius did it again for us. We appreciate it. Now let's open it up a little bit. Let's look back at the week that was and forward to the week coming up here. And, you know, we'll just start with the two – well, Friday night I did a little bit of hustling. I was at the first half of Demrest against Pascac Valley. And I was interested in that game because both of those teams the week before, you know, had, had big – games that were going to determine a lot. You know, Demarest, as I talked about with DJ, played that brilliant state semifinal against Riverdale uh, last year and lost. And then coming back this year, um, this was going to be a game to see if they could really, you know, make a run back towards the playoffs. Pascag Valley, on the other hand, you know, Richie Barton two weeks ago covered them against Paramus. And, you know, that game was over before it even started. So I was interested to see how uh, PV would bounce back, just like I was interested in how Demers would bounce back from that regular season loss. And, you know, I, I couldn't believe that PV was the same team on the field that got smoked by Paramus because, to me, they look pretty good. Lenny Cusimano doing a good job. You know, it's the uh, nothing fancy, nothing fancy on the uniforms, nothing fancy in terms of trying to trick you, but they got some big boys up front. Uh, Jake Williams, who likes to, you know, stick the ball up in there between the tackles, and they were very effective. So, uh, a, a good win for Pascag Valley, and B, gets them back on the right track, heading into what is a pivotal game this week for both sides in the Pascag Valley Old Japan rivalry. You and I stood on the sidelines together at the second game I was at Friday night where Ramapo really uh, kind of took Old Japan apart a little bit. You know, Ramapo, I saw them against uh, Sparta opening day, and they, we talked about uh, on the show that they had hung on for a they did not finish that game very well. They hung on for a win, but I'll tell you what, from play number one that night, uh, they just showed that, you know, they brought their A game. They were a better team than Old Japan that night. And again, for Old Japan, we talked about it on the sideline. You know, in high school, they lost a tremendous amount of uh, experience, especially in their line play. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they've, they've gone through a tough schedule so far for Old Japan. They're getting a little nicked up. As we all know, they don't have the, the biggest numbers. And, you know, I think that might be catching up with them a little bit. But, you know, again, they will be ready to play this weekend. Yeah. I mean, they're home against Pascag Valley. Then they got Wayne Valley and then Teaneck and Burgerfield to close things out. So, pivotal. Uh, you know, they're 2-2. Two and two. Pascag Valley's 2-1. and one. So, uh you know, and Pascag Valley at the end of the <laughs> Pascag Valley is at Riverdale and at Ramapo in their seventh and eighth games of the season. So, you know, it, it, this is very. And then they play New Cane in Connecticut to, to close things out. I don't know how that affects PowerPoints or the other things uh, about those things. But Pascag Valley needs to win this week uh, for sure. And Old Japan feels the same way. You know, just talking about PowerPoints, and I, I meant to bring this up when we were talking to DJ, but you know, I was having a conversation. I covered a uh, Cliffside Park boys soccer game. Uh, yesterday, as we taped this on Tuesday night. So on, on Monday afternoon, I was standing on the sidelines of Cliffside Park with Dave Porfido, who is the new athletic director at Cliffside, formerly the athletic director at Woodridge. And being a Group 1 small school guy myself, he and I have a lot to talk about. And we were just talking about this PowerPoint system this year. And his he, he sent me a text later following up on our conversation. Do you know, in Group 1, the number 31 ranked team in the the United Power Rankings is Ridgefield with an official record of 0-2. The number 32 ranked team, one spot below the Royals, is North Arlington. Now, Jimmy, Ridgefield does not have a football team this year. So when Coach says it's not transparent and nobody's really sure what's going on, uh, I'm pretty sure that North Arlington could beat uh, Ridgefield, and it just goes to show you that this is a work in progress, this whole PowerPoints thing. It, you know, it certainly is. We talked before we went on the air. You know, I've been involved with high school football since 1990, and there was always 
an ability to go back and figure out PowerPoints. You understood the process, how it worked. It's gotten to the point now, Cor, where I don't even look at it. <laughs> I have no desire to look at it. I, I wouldn't understand. I think you have to be a Philadelphia lawyer to figure it out. Right. And, uh, again, you know, like Coach Nymph has said, <laughs> what are we doing here? You know, what, where are we going? <laughs> what are we trying to do? And uh, instead of making it easier, it seems that we're making it harder. So I, I, you mentioned these North 1, North 2, how they're going to break it up. I want to know how they're going to measure the distance and from where. I mean, uh, you know, again, a lot of questions. <laughs> from your house, hopefully. <laughs> Yeah, from, your from house. my house, from the car, you know, <laughs> from where Brian Carr is in Italy. I, you know, I don't, I don't know. Hopefully when it's done, it'll be done right, and, uh, you know, we'll go from there. Yeah, like I'm open, you know, I, and uh, let's give a tip of the cap to Gridiron, New Jersey. They do a great job. They do a great job of tabulating this stuff, and at least... You know, putting it in front of you. Not that you can understand what the numbers mean. I, I mean, you got to be an actuary to figure this stuff out. But, like, I opened North Group 1. Shabazz, Weequayek, New Milford, Hasbrook Heights. I mean, so are, are those the top four seeds? Are those – are they going to play each other? Are they going to see each other in a crossover? Are they North 1? Are they North – it's like, you know – Tune in tomorrow when we decide what town is uh, close. I, I just, it takes away from the fun of narrow, you know, like we talk about the season goes so fast and you're you're playing, to, you're funneling towards that end point. And here there's no funnel. It's just kind of straight ahead until we get to the end and then uh, we'll tell you what we're going to tell you. So, all right, let's get off our soapbox. We did enough of that with uh, Coach Nymphius. And listen, I'm, I'm also not against it and maybe it'll turn out great. So I have an open mind and I'm, I'm not railing against it. I just don't get it. All right, uh, what else from last week should we mention here? I mean, there were some big games played. The NJIC kind of yeah. shook itself out. So how, how did how did last week in the NJIC play into what what is to come this week in the NJIC? Well, I, I think Rutherford, obviously, very impressive last week. They went to 4-0. They beat previously unbeaten Glenrock 40-7. to uh, So, you know, Rutherford, the defending champs last year, come back to 4-0. They're at Waldwick this week. You know, Waldwick always a tough program, so we'll keep an eye on them. New Milford with a very uh, big win over a very competitive Hawthorne program, 35-21. to They, on Saturday, visit... I believe undefeated Lyndhurst, uh, which is which is a nice game to go see. Yep. We're going to see you know Lyndhurst and New Milford should be a very very good game. Hasbro Kites over uh, you know big over Creskill. You know and unfortunately I believe the numbers are, and the demographics in Creskill are starting to hurt that program. And as we know, it's been a program when you mentioned Group One for the last twenty five thirty years. Hasbro Kites this week travels out to Butler. Butler won in overtime this past week over Saddlebrook, double overtime. Saddlebrook went for the win, two-point conversion, did not get it. Butler's 3-0. and Whoever wins that game, I mean, should be the champion in that division. So that's a very, very big game there, too. So, you know, a lot of big games this week in the NJIC. Yeah, fun too. You know, Butler coming in and and uh, makes it a lot more fun. They're they're a historical program, I and mean, you're right about Cresco. I mean, going back to when I was in high school at Palisades Park, and they were killing us under uh, you know Coach Valley over there for years. And yeah, mm -hmm. football, but it, it it plays into the broader point that we were talking about with you know Coach Nymphius. I mean. It, it, Co-ops are, are going to have to come into play here sooner or later. I mean, I run around, I, I shoot pictures at a lot of different teams, and, you know, my, my team pictures are noticeably smaller than they were just a, a few years ago. So, you know, we could be seeing the end, or I, well, I, I, I will say it. I mean, I, I think we are seeing the end of these standalone small programs and even some of these standalone medium-sized programs. Yeah, you know, there's no question. That's why I really have to marvel at some of the programs that yeah. are still able to maintain it. I mean, Hasbro Kites. Milford is a, you know, Hasbro Kites is another perfect example. But, you know, you look at a Saddlebrook who, you know, they do a great job. Their coaches, they have 26 kids. Yeah. You know, it, it's just it's sad to see what's happening with numbers. And, and sad to see teams not having freshman programs anymore. Uh, you know, another team to mention, Woodridge, 18 seniors for them. Yeah. They're 2-2. Two and two. They had a nice win last week. 
But, you know, you lose 18 seniors and kind of wonder what the future holds there. So you're 100% right. I think co-op would be the answer to solidify, you know, group one and two football. Yes. Uh, you mentioned, I should have mentioned, I forgot, I was at the Woodridge Bogota game on Saturday. Uh, I like to get me some small school football, and that was the best one available on Saturday afternoon. And, you know, you show up at the field, you never know what you're going to find. Charlie Trent Acosta, you and, not, you and I have known him forever. You know, basic, uh, his, his offense, his offensive philosophy has always been, you know, basically the two-back set and, and kind of pro style, and then you show up there and he's winging the ball all over the yard. He's got 18 seniors, and who's playing quarterback for him? Nino Iacovino, a freshman. Yes, so, yeah. uh, it, uh, such an unknown that I got originally got his name. His name was uh, number twenty-two was listed wrong on the roster that I had. I wrote the original story. I had the kid's name wrong in it, but that's just that's what happens when you start a freshman. How was I supposed to know, Jimmy? Well, you know, you mentioned numbers. You know, you, you, when you have smaller numbers, you're forced to play freshmen at times. Yeah. yeah. And and you really wonder if that freshman, now obviously the kid from uh, Woodridge you mentioned is, he can't handle himself. But at other programs smaller that are playing freshmen at the varsity level, are they really ready for that? You know, that's a question that I, I wonder about a, a lot. That's a good point. I mean, you don't want a kid rushed onto the varsity level because you have nobody else. I mean, this kid beat out somebody else to win the starting job. Right. That's uh, completely sure. legitimate. But you're right. Hey, we don't have a uh, cornerback. Our senior just got hurt. Well, you look down the bench, and all we got is a freshman who might not be ready. And, you know, forget forget the injury factor. You don't want to ruin that kid's high school experience. He goes in there, he gets beat, you know, for a 40-yard touchdown. Everybody's looking at him, and he's like, hey, you know, what do I need this for? Uh, so, uh, you know, there's that part of it, too. All right, what are we missing? Anything else that we should be talking about here uh, coming up this week? Uh, where, where are you headed? Just a couple of games. Go ahead. Just a couple of games. Clifton over Hackensack. Uh, you know, Clifton moves to 3-0, and which is a, a nice job uh, for Coach uh, Sinkew at Clifton. Uh, they're at Passaic Tech this weekend with the, with the ability to go 4-0, which would be beautiful. Uh, you know, I want to mention a, a team that lost, but uh, you know, to put a tremendous scare into DePaul last week. Del Barton, I know we don't cover them much, but they were actually beating DePaul with three minutes left in the game, 28-21. Del Barton, uh, DePaul had a fight back score to send it to overtime and they won it but you know here we are in that where you think hey this game's going to be a blowout and you know the game had to be played and I give kudos to Bill Martin yeah absolutely Uh, that's a good one All right, so where are you headed this weekend what do you think what's on your schedule probably Ramapo Riverdale on uh, Friday I think it's the best game I'm going to try to stay away from the parochials with all that pomp and circumstance that we saw last week. <laughs> uh, and then Saturday, potentially New Milford at Lynnhurst. I think it's a you know a, a good chance for fans to see New Milford, a program Coach Wild has really put on the map, the consistency. And for Lynnhurst, an opportunity to score a big win and set them up for a potential spot in the NJIC uh, semifinal. Yep. And the bonus at that game is our very own Richie Ballgame Barton has committed to do the new Milford Lynnhurst game. So not only you, Jimmy, will have the pleasure of standing together with Richie Ballgame for a full 60 minutes of high school football, but everybody else who will be in attendance at the Lynnhurst New Milford game can also do the same. Walk over, rub his head. See you next week on the football show. Follow the leader.